not all heat pumps are created equal. A village in the UK is learning that the hard way this winter. Well, we're in the energy space uh, when we work in heating. Uh, I figure I point it this winter as we find these articles to cover different heating um, articles to talk about how not all heating elements, heating pumps, heating equipment uh, works the same. And depending on what you're trying to do, you want different equipment. So this comes from the Daily Mail, um, written by Claire Elliott um, for the Scottish Daily Mail. Um, it says, uh, the title is Winter of Discontent in Highland Eco Village, backed by Charles. That's King Charles in England. It is a flagship eco village hailed as a success during a recent village by King Charles, but homeowners and tenants in Tomintol Moray claim the Scottish government funded project has failed to lift families out of fuel poverty as promised and instead landed them with costly bills. One mother who shares her property with her two children, aged one and five, so these are young children, has been left with no heating for three weeks as temperatures have dipped below minus 10 Celsius. Um, so Fahrenheit, uh, I can't do the math in my head, that's, that's close to zero um, Fahrenheit. Many residents living in the 12 bought and rented properties claim air source heat pumps. Um, now, we'll get back to that. There's, there's hair, air source and there is ground source heat pumps and they work a little differently. So here they're using air source heat pumps, um, which are not really designed for what they're trying to do here which extract ambient warmth from the air outside to heat the homes, stop working when temperatures hit minus one Celsius. Well, you're trying to extract warmth from minus one air, or what they're dealing with up here says minus 10 air. How's that gonna work? As a result, they are now having to fork out for electric and fan heaters and oil filled radiator. So right back to where we started. <laughs> Here's some pictures. Homeowners and tenants uh, claim the Scottish government funded project failed to lift it. Okay. King meets members of the public during a visit to the Discovery Center and on a closed internal to hear about the 3.3 million pound energy efficiency housing project. So here's King Charles checking it out. Okay, article continues. The king was shown, uh, I gotta get this name right, the Tomatole and Glenlivet. Uh, oh, Glenlivet, I think I've had a scotch um, from there. That's really good. Development trust scheme last month when it was hailed a great success. But Morton Martin, 53 years old, whose home is so cold, she has to sit with a blanket over her, said, quote, I don't think they've done their homework. <clears throat> There's a lot of that in the transitional energy sphere right now, not doing our homework. We're the highest village in the north of Scotland, and the air pump doesn't seem compatible with the altitude up here. She, like many others, claims she was also being left to pay for a neighbor's bill as the serial numbers on the meters did not correspond with the correct homes. Uh, the development has was marked as affordable and one which would also help, quote, tackle fuel po poverty and social isolation. Drew McPherson, whose son Connor is 28, bought one and said, quote, you've got all these young people trying to put themselves on the property ladder and it's horrendous what's happening to them. Another tenant said holes drilled into the wall for ventilation were causing drafts. The tenant was also left with no heating for days and said, quote, when the king visited, I want to stand outside with a sign saying, I've got no heating. Alpha Projects, which built the development, said in one home, it has addressed issues with an air source heat pump and that the issues surrounding the serial numbers of the meters has now been resolved. 
it said the air source heat pumps were effective to minus 25 C and has provided data to back this up. The firm said the holes in the walls were to, quote, provide controllable trickle ventilation and are required to meet building standards. The project was led by Tomentol and Glenlivet Development Trust with the support of the Community Housing Trust. Ronnie McRae of CHT, um, which is overseeing, quote, the defects period, said it was confident all the issues raised can be addressed. Tilly Smith of TGTDT said it was, quote, extremely sorry for the delays in getting materials and professionals out to fix the various issues. A Scottish government spokesman said communities, housing trusts are in contact with regulatory and industry bodies regarding the matters raised. Okay, now, so this, um, you know, newly touted eco village, and you know, they'll probably work out the kinks, right? But um, like Morna Martin said, they didn't do their homework on either the winters um, in Scotland or on these air pumps. Now I'm gonna go where I found this originally was a LinkedIn post by a Mr. Carl Farrow. Um, and his LinkedIn says he's a founder and CEO at Serify Energy, closed loop th geothermal, disruptive technology investor, entrepreneur. He's an environmentalist, climate changer. Interesting what that means. NED board member and event speaker. Now he posted this and he posted it with um, <clears throat> some interesting commentary on the difference between ground source and air source heat pumps. I want to agree to you. So Saturday thoughts, news about this article. His was from the Times, but it's covering the same thing. Quote, education in the interest of mainstream media, such as the Times. So he got this from the Times. He's kind of bashing the Times in this case. <clears throat> I think for consumer understanding, we need to clearly differentiate dif <laughs> differentiate the term heat pumps as there are two different types. So he's saying there's a ground source heat pump, GSHP, or air source heat pump. And remember in this article, they're using the air source heat pump. So he goes on, both absorb heat from renewable sources, compressing this heat into working fluids for heating water. Okay. So the air source heat pumps use heat energy from the air, pumping higher temperature heat into a building. The efficiency of an air source heat pump varies across the seasons and the time of day. Air source heat pumps can be especially problematic in winter when you need heating the most, but when the air is at its coldest, resulting in the unit requiring more electricity to operate efficiently efficiently, not a problem if linked to your solar panel system. The true efficiency of an air source heat pump is difficult to ascertain as most are tested on an inlet temperature, that is the ambient air that they're pulling from the air outside of above seven degrees Celsius, which does not reflect UK winters or extreme temperature fluctuations. Remember in the article, they were dealing with minus 10 at this point now they claimed it should work uh up to minus 25 but he's saying um as far as manufacturing stuff they're only tested up to above seven so you know he goes on ground source heat pumps which they're not using in this village take heat from the ground where year-round temperatures are maintained at above 10 C, meaning average, meaning average ground temperatures will always be significantly warmer than the average air temperature. As a result, on the coldest days, a ground source heat pump system can be up to 15 degrees Celsius warmer than the cold air coming into an air source heat pump. Ground source heat pumps are designed and tested with an inlet temperature of zero, so at freezing, representing true winter conditions, resulting in no unexpected spikes in electricity. 
Ground source heat pumps use much less energy to produce usable temperature for heating and hot water, meaning lower electric bills and better COP, which stands for coefficient of performance, being the difference between the amount of energy produced and the energy used to produce it. So air source heat pumps can produce heat, but they're designed for the continuous operate for con the continuous operation at sub-zero temperatures that we face over several months over a UK winter, specifically in poor insulated properties. Um, air source heat pumps have a place for sure, specifically where ground source heat pumps would have space restrictions for boreholes, maybe better insulation standards equal to those of Eastern Europe or Scandinavia would help, but our UK buildings um, regs are long way behind for the average uh, property in the UK. Today's uh, air source heat pumps are likely inadequate or will operate uh, substandard. <clears throat> So um, what he's saying is, like I said in the article, sounds like these heat pumps can work, but you need the ground source heat pumps. And I don't know about spacing or restrictions or like that, but using the air source heat pumps are not working for this video. What do you think about this article? What do you think about Carl Farrow's commentary? Please let me know down in the comments. Of course, um, the article will be linked in the description. If you like what you heard, if this was helpful to you, please like and subscribe and share so that you can continue to get your energy science industry and regulatory news for your work or your investments in energy. And remember, with science in our hands, fossils at our feet, knowledge in our heads, and God at the helm, the future is ours to build.